After a long day of hiking, there is nothing more satisfying than getting to camp and chowing down on some food. But if you're new to backpacking, planning what to eat can be kind of daunting. Hi, I'm Elspeth Weeks. I do a lot of backpacking, so I'm gonna use my years of experience to walk you through everything you need to know about planning food for your trip to the backcountry. This is the first video in my series of backpacking for beginners. If you're new to backpacking or if you want to take on a backpacking trip this summer, consider subscribing because I'm going to be doing a few more videos that will walk you through everything you need to know for your first trip. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day and before a long day of hiking, that is especially true. I've been eating hot breakfast for years, but after the really bad wildfire season we had in California this past summer, I have slowly started doing more cold breakfast and cold food in general. For the sake of this video, I'll walk you through options that are both hot and cold. So starting off, instant oatmeal is the classic option. Uh, it is super easy, super fast, it's tasty, it's full of fiber, and cleanup can be super simple. Uh, my other go-to is Pop-Tarts. I have a huge sweet tooth and I love Pop-Tarts and I almost always take them with me when I go backpacking. They're a huge sugar bomb, but that's like exactly what I want. <laughs> if you want to get more creative, one time I made biscuits and gravy in the backcountry. The one time I did this, it was a lot of fun, but cleanup was terrible. I made a huge mess. If I'm gonna do this again, I would practice in my kitchen before doing it in the woods. Your mileage might vary. And then of course, no discussion about breakfast is complete without mentioning how you drink coffee. I know I for one cannot make it through the day without caffeine, um, and I have seen so many different options of how to drink coffee when you're camping. Everything from French press attachments to a jet boil, disposable pour over filters, or instant coffee. My go-to is instant coffee. Uh, even though it might not taste as good as pour over or french press, it is a lot more convenient and also you don't have to carry, you know, used soggy grounds with you for the rest of your trip. Um, yes, instant coffee tastes terrible. The best instant coffee I have found is my favorite local roastery had a partnership with this instant coffee startup called Swift Cup. Um, I think a lot of uh, boutique roasteries around the USA have these partnerships these days, so if you have a favorite, go down to their store and see if you can get some of their instant coffee. For snacks, it is all about bars and trail mix. Go to any supermarket in the country, you will have so many options. We are truly living through the golden age of energy bars. My latest favorite are these bars made in Redding, California called Off the Farm. They have a ton of flavors, they have meal bars and also protein bars, and they're delicious and packed with nutrients and calories. Really great sort of energy boost through the middle of the day. Other great snack options are dried fruit, nuts, jerky, and then of course I think it's a good thing to have like cliff blocks or goo gel. When you're walking in the sun you can lose electrolytes really quickly. It's a really convenient easy way to replenish some electrolytes. The way I view lunch is that the longer amount of time you spend in the backcountry the more lunch kind of blends into snacks. Lately my sort of go-to has been to order a sub the night before I go camping and then eat it on my first day on the trail. So dinner is the meal that I usually reserve the most creativity for. If you're feeling lazy, there are so many options, freeze-dried meals. Um, my absolute favorite freeze-dried meal is Mountain House's Chili Mac. I don't know what it is, I just can't get enough of that stuff. Other great options are Backpackers Pantry and Patagonia Provisions. Yes, Patagonia Provisions are a little more expensive, but they're really tasty and extremely high quality. If you'd rather cook something more from scratch, uh, your classic options are mac and cheese, instant noodles, instant mashed potatoes. Um, all of these are great because you can spice them up with whatever flavors you want. The sky's the limit because these are just like carby bases for a bigger meal. If you're into fishing, consider bringing a fishing rod with you. On a few occasions, we've gone and caught some trout for dinner and then added a little bit of oil to our pot, pan fried it, and then added it to instant noodles. This is a really fun interactive dinner idea. Uh, just be sure that you follow the regulations of wherever you're camping when, if you decide to do some fishing. 
The last thing to mention is of course cold soaking. Uh, as I said before, with sort of the rise in wildfires we've been having, I think it's more important to be more conscious of the impact that our cooking can have. So that's where cold soaking comes in. And it's exactly what it sounds like. You take a meal and you soak it in water and it will eventually hydrate itself, even if not as quickly as with boiling water. The downside, of course, is that you'll have cold food. So one last option if you want to have it both ways are these things called home meals. Basically what home meals are is a pouch of fully hydrated food inside of another pouch. Fill the outer pouch with water and then there's some chemicals that come in the packet. When the chemicals interact with the water it creates heat so you put the inner pouch into the outer pouch and it sort of makes a steaming contraption for the food. Um, and of course they're a little heavier than dry food because they're already hydrated. But I've used this a few times. It's really great if there's fire restrictions but you still want to have a warm meal for dinner. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments what your favorite backpacking meals are or if you use any of the tips I gave you, let me know that too. If you found this video helpful, please consider hitting that like button. And if you want to follow along for more tips or you're interested in watching some of the adventure videos I make, um, please consider subscribing. Uh, it's a really small thing you can do that really helps small creators like me. Alright, thanks. Bye.